an interesting, you never get to a point where things are done. It's like every level is like, then, then this, and now we are too big for that. And now we're doing this. And I feel like there's these moments in business where you're stretching, you know, or you're you're having to take that leap of faith and all that risk, whatever, however you want to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is super scary. Yeah. Yeah. And we've got all these plans for the new venue that we can't really do where we currently are. So that's Mm -hmm. exciting. And we think that will be good financially and you know bringing in more customers but you don't know like we're in this limbo where we can't do it now to see Mm -hmm. we've got to wait till we're in the new place which is going to be a little bit of time I think and yeah so it's um there's all these ideas is it going to work Mm. how do you do you have like a strategy to like make yourself feel better about taking those risks yeah, that was really interesting because it was a few months ago now I was thinking, oh, this pl- a place appeared that was good and it would work and I had to make a decision whether I was going to take it on and I started freaking out. <clears throat> I was like, I'd be freaking ah. out? Yeah, I woke up in the middle of the night going, <laughs> I can't afford this, it's financial ruin and we're, the dance floor will fall <laughs> the apart. The world is ending. <laughs> yes. And then... Um, I took. I think it took a couple of weeks where I sort of, you know, tried a bit of meditation. Um, no, I just thought, thought it through and um, just tried to be realistic with myself. But also I gave myself a bit of a pep talk, pep talk I think, because I'm a person who doesn't naturally take risks and I'm really try, usually try and, you know, just take it steady. And I was like, no, why can't I take this risk? You know, like maybe I should step up and, you know, look, the world's not going to fall in if something doesn't go right. You know, like it was, I just sort of felt like I should back myself and step up and go for it. And I've got supporters and, you know, my other dance teachers are really um, supportive and the students are and, um yeah, I just sort of, yeah, I just sort of took a couple of weeks to think it through and then I'm like, no, I'm just going to do it and, you know, I, I think it'll be okay. <laughs> I I love it. Like, and I just love, like, you know, sometimes we do bloody need to back ourselves, don't we? Because uh, often hard, I though. don't. Yeah, yeah, often I don't at all. Like, I'm really like, oh, no, I can't do that. Or I'm, I get lose my confidence or I'm you know I'll just hang back or whatever but yeah I'm like I've got to do it sometime why not now Hmm. oh I love it so much I'm so impressed and it's so hilarious too because like this has been your life you have done this before you've gone from a hole to a place already before you've kind of taken that leap you've Hmm. you know built up a customer you've done all the things there's all of the evidence to show that you can do it and you will be a success but Mm. still you go oh can I like it's why do we do this to ourselves yeah definitely I think it's um I don't know it's like your upbringing and your background and maybe even the you know being a woman isn't it because you know look you see a world of men out there businessmen white businessmen yes (laughs) doing all these things and you're like like that's just every day in the news. This person did this and this, and then they became bankrupt or whatever. Like, yeah, you know, it's not really this woman stepped up and did this amazing thing. I mean, it, they do, but yeah, it's. I think there's just it's not enough seeing women out there doing stuff, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and I also think, like to your point. Um, we're all on different journeys and the, mm. the level at which we want to step up might not be the same yeah. as the the dude in the blue suit doing his thing. Like we go, we just want to go from here to here. Like yeah, that's who's right. doing that stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's true because I think a lot of the time I see a new business, you know, open in town and I'm like, how do they afford that rent? How did they afford to do that fit out? Where did they get all their money from? I've never seen that business before in Albany. Like, what's happening? You know, like, yeah, they must have taken a huge risk. 
totally Mm. I know and sometimes they only last for a few months and you're like oh god I feel for them so much you feel so sad sometimes when you see the business close yeah yeah well I think like for us because we know it we live and breathe it so we know like exactly what they went through exactly the stress and go oh god it's not good yeah 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 so how did you grow? So that's a, I'm always interested in people's journeys. So going from three kids to maxing out the hall, then maxing out the current space, like how have mm. you grown over the years? Have there been any particular things that have worked well for you? Um, it's a good question. I think uh, because we started at the primary school where my, my own kids were going, um, we sort of, got our name there and you know maybe a couple of friends of my kids came and then um we just it was probably word of mouth more than anything uh Mm -hmm. I put flyers in the like the school newsletter and on the notice boards and then uh, we started using Facebook eventually um and put it out that way and that sort of got people in Albany but I think first of all it was mainly the kids from that school Mm -hmm. Um, then when I ventured out of that hall because it wasn't suitable so more then I started getting kids from other schools Um, yeah I mean I I would advertise when I could but I didn't really have a big marketing budget or anything so it was just you know as we did things often I would run a holiday workshop um, and that would be something where I'd say to people oh come and try it you know it's just a one hour workshop in the school holidays you know, if your kid likes it you know then you can come next term so just little things like that um and then we started doing classes for adults which is quite a big part of our um clientele now mm. so i think i started one class and i actually persevered with that class for quite some time so i sort of had three regulars you know, and then one person will be sick. and But I kept going because my sort of philosophy at that time was it was good for me as well. You know, mm. like I would be dancing along with the class and that, so that was good for my own fitness and well-being and we all just had fun together. And then eventually, um, you know, we were attracted more people. So, yeah, it's a bit of a hard slog sometimes, but um, it, I just kept thinking about the benefits to like me or you know if it was just a small class we still had fun and and that's just keeping it going so then someone else can come along and see that fun and want to join in so yeah 